You're watching Cartel TV. I'm Jenny, and this isn't just a review, it's a lifestyle. In this video, I travel up to the Barossa Valley to a lovely little country estate getaway. I visit a winery with a twist, and I also stop at a famous chicken shop that, being in the Barossa Valley, is actually licensed as well. Now to get me there, we'll be driving an iconic little SUV, the Suzuki Vitara Turbo. Now sit back and enjoy the ride as Cartel TV takes you to the countryside. You might notice this is a bit of a different format from our usual Cartel TV videos. And that's because we're living in different times right now. And many of us who love traveling and do it often, like we can't do it right now. So we've decided to go out and explore our local region and the tourism around there. It's so good to be out on the open road right now. With restrictions in place and the world the way it is, it's actually the perfect time to explore this beautiful country of ours. There are so many beautiful hidden gems in our own backyard. So it's actually the perfect time to get into a trusty car and explore our local regions. Plus, it is so important to be supporting our local businesses right now. They've been doing it really hard for over a year. So it's a win-win situation for everyone. And I am so excited to be out here finding a new favorite destination so close to home. So what is the Barossa? Well, it's South Australia's award-winning wine region. Not only that, but it's considered one of the greatest wine growing regions in the world. There's over 160 years of history of turning this area into not only a wine lover's paradise, but also a rich and captivating destination for foodies and travel bugs alike. Our first stop will be in Tanunda, typically about an hour out of the Adelaide CBD. But we've added a few minutes because we are taking the scenic route around the city and through the Adelaide Hills for a nicer drive along the way. So now I'll tell you about my choice of wheels for today. It's the 2021 Suzuki Vitara Turbo. It's small in size, but it is still big enough to pack the necessities I need. The engine is a 1.4 litre booster jet that gives nice economy with that smaller engine size. But having the turbo means there's that extra kick on hand when you need it. The official fuel consumption is listed at 5.9 litres combined. As I'm driving through the mountainous winding terrain of the Adelaide Hills, I'm obviously averaging a bit higher than that. Now you might be wondering, why'd you take the Suzuki Vitara turbo to the Barossa Valley? It's a two wheel drive, seems like a city car to me. Well, the handling, engine, space and comfort actually make the Vitara Turbo an easy choice. And given we won't be expecting to do any strenuous off-roading, the Vitara Turbo will be well within its capability. If I was planning on off-roading, there's the Vitara All Grip for that. The Barossa is a valley around 70 kilometres north of Adelaide and incorporates a cluster of quaint little towns. As you can see, it is a really fertile land, as well as being visually breathtaking. And the traditional owners of the land, the Paramank people, cultivated it and made use of its diverse vegetation, wildlife and water supply. So after that lovely drive to get here, it's time for lunch. And I've come to a local favourite. So after a lovely drive, I'm pretty hungry. And so we're going to stop for lunch here at the Nuryutpa Chicken Centre. Hi, my name's Camille Hemsey. I'm uh, part owner of the New Riot for Chicken Centre in the Barossa Valley and second in charge when my wife is here. New Riot for Chicken Centre has been in the family for 40 years. Family owned business, started with my mother and father back in the 80s and I've come along and, and took over in the early 90s uh, from mum and dad. Um, everything that we do here is always fresh, we cut everything here on the premises. We mix everything here on the premises. Uh, we have a, a Lebanese menu, you know, some hummus and some fatouche and falafel, kafta, as well as obviously your coleslaws and your potato salads and, and the traditional chicken chop salads. We do fish, we do burgers, we do urosses. Obviously my specialty is chicken. I've been doing chickens now for over 40 years. Yeah, we also do alcohol. Um, We've had a liquor licence for three years now. Uh, we have a licence that would seat 45 people indoors. Thank you. How epic is this lunch spread? We've got to try one of these. 
<laughs> Jen's like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> now we're off to Tananda, which is a charming little town that's a nine minute drive from Noriotpa. Tananda was a collection of little townships settled by Prussian immigrants in the 1840s that have merged into one, and the remnants of its European influence are still very present today. This is one of the best things about being in the Brossa. You're only an hour from Adelaide, yet look at this. It's as beautiful as any picturesque postcard. For our overnight stay, we chose the Lanzarac Country Estate, a family hosted boutique bed and brekkie. And to tell us more about it was owner operator, Justin. Um, my name's Justin. Um, I own Lanzarac Country Estate along with my wife and both sets of our parents are involved as well. So Lanzarac has been in our family now since 2013. Uh, long story short, my wife and I got married in 2006 in the Brossa. Uh, we actually stayed at Lanzarac with our family and our bridal party. Um, and almost seven years later to the day after getting married, we ended up taking over and since then we've been rebuilding the property stage by stage uh, and living on site and hosting it as a bed and breakfast. Five acre property, we're one kilometre from the main street of Tanunda, so although we're only literally around the corner, um, we're surrounded by vines, uh, including our own, which are 100 year old dry grown vines. Uh, five rooms, all um, private rooms with their own bathrooms, uh, and then a separate area where we serve breakfast for our guests. We're also looking to do more weddings um, and corporate conferences on the property as well. As opposed to other B&Bs, we're, we're a hosted bed and breakfast, so we really do make sure that our guests get uh, a true Barossa experience. We live on site, um, we provide the breakfast for the guests, so it's fully cooked breakfast. Um, we also allow them to basically have run of the property, um, which means we also spend time with our guests having a drink by the fire or outside on the lake. Um, but just try and give them a better feel for what the is about, a much more homely feel. I'm buzzing, let's drink up your death Look like big fun, come on, let's get it on Like that on Finn Gay song After an amazing night's sleep in this comfortable on, bed I was refreshed and ready to get up early for the next part of our journey So even if you've been to the Brossa before, most people are still generally here to focus on one thing, and that is the vino. And today we checked out Langmire Winery in Tanunda for a fascinating tour to learn about the history of the property and of course some wine tasting. Whoop whoop. Uh, my name's Jonathan, I'm the cellar door manager at Langmire. Most people are familiar with the very German background to the Barossa, uh, and that's exactly what Langmile is. Langmile is the name uh, of a village that was here originally. Uh, its English translation is the Long Mile. It's really a geographic description of the village. Um, the village stretched from where we are here on this property uh, for a mile and a quarter due south, uh, and it was a, a village of 12 families uh, who were spaced out along that Long Mile, uh, which runs parallel to the river here. Um, perfect little farming allotments, really. Uh, and uh, Christian Oric on this property was a blacksmith by trade, hence the little blacksmith shop and things on the, on the property here. Um, but like the others in the village, he was also a small scale farmer, he had various mixed crops, cereal grains, fruit trees, a um, few livestock, but he also planted some vines. And that's where you find the humble beginnings of the wine industry in the Barossa. Not in big business walking in saying, let's fill her up with vines and get wine production underway. We had small, basically peasant farmers growing various mixed crops. Uh, Christian was not alone by any means. Uh, seven of the 12 families in Langmile planted vineyard as part of their mixed crops. Uh, but they discovered quite quickly um, that the geography of the valley, and it always comes back to geography, uh, was ideal for viticulture. Uh, and as you do, you go with your strengths. So more and more vines were planted, uh, and hence the, the birth of the wine industry in the Barossa. So, our great privilege here at Langmile is that in addition to all the lovely old buildings and things that survived from the time of the village, 
we've still got a few acres of Christian's original planted vines. So uh, that's what we're drinking, uh, the Freedom Shiraz. Uh, these settlers had come here to escape religious persecution. Uh, and in terms of the, the Oric family, they have a, a book of their family history, uh, which is called From Persecution to Freedom. So hence the Freedom Vineyard and the Freedom Wine that comes from those vines. So what we've got here is part of the living history of Lang Mile. Uh, vine planted by Christian Oric here on the property in 1843. So at 178 years of age, uh, perhaps a little weary, a little gnarly, but still very good at what they do. These old timers only give us about a bottle of wine per vine each year, but uh, what it lacks in quantity, it more than makes up for with quality. Uh, in terms of the Lang Mile story, um, we're about um, certainly smaller quantities. Um, you know, there's a huge range uh, of, uh, of wineries available from the really big boys uh, to tiny little operators that sadly most people will never hear about um, because they don't make the volumes that, that get recognition. So we're probably what you would call medium sized. Um, our focus is certainly red wine. Um, we're in the Barossa after all, and particularly Shiraz. Um, but uh, we make uh, whites as well, also a rosé. Um, so in, in terms of the valley, um, the reason it's such a great, great place to visit is you've just got so much choice. Um, you've got um, lots of different restaurants, lots of different cellar doors, uh, and you know, you'll never get tired of it. Wine is always different from vineyard to vineyard, winery to winery, and certainly season to season. So, the Barossa is renowned for its wine, but you don't even have to be a drinker to enjoy it. Well, I've seen beautiful scenery and tasted delicious food and wine and stayed in gorgeous boutique accommodation. But I have to say that the best thing about my trip to the Barossa has been the people. Their warm personalities have just made me feel like I was meeting old friends. And while I really hate to leave, I have to remember that this is all just on our doorstep. And I also have to thank Suzuki Vitara Turbo for getting me there safely and comfortably. Thanks again for watching Cartel TV. This wasn't just a review, it's a lifestyle. Now, check out the links below to see all the places that we visited so you can go as well. And also we're gonna have some cool outtakes and fun things on social media. And we'll see you next time. Peace.